Today I'm going to be showing you how you can run XM rig on your mobile phones for mining. So in previous videos I've covered various mining on phones, which is my preferred way of mining. I do like the various project a lot, and I personally mine various. However, I have gotten some requests for mining Raptorium and Monero and some other coins. And the nice thing about XM rig is that it is compatible with ARM devices. So if you hop on over to their GitHub, you will see that TPU mining can work on both ARM v7 and ARM v8. And I have personally have used XMRig on ARM processors, in particular Raspberry Pis, since 2016, 2017 timeframe. So it does work, it does work well. Uh, however, the hash rate's not phenomenal. Uh, but from a stability standpoint, it certainly works. So today I'm going to show you how you can get that up and running on your phones. So we're going to be using a tablet today, just because it's a little bit easier and a little bit more powerful. Uh, this is a Fire Tablet 10, I think this is either a 2021 or 2022 release. You can see right now it is mining Varus at around 4.4 mega hash. We're going to go ahead and stop that, so we're going to do a control C. And you can install this miner alongside Varus. Uh, just don't try to run both of them at the same time. You're going to want to run one or the other. And for this video, we're going to do Raptorium. But the same steps pretty much apply to Monero. Uh, it's just a different launch perimeter. If you look at the GitHub, you can see that XMRig supports RandomX, which would be like Monero, Zephyr, those types of coins, uh, Kapow we won't be doing because that's GPU based and we're only doing CPU. Uh, Crypto Knight supports as well as Ghost Rider. So let's hop on over and there are some dependencies that we need to install first. And all of these will be linked in the description below. Uh, but we're gonna, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna do a paste here. You can see we're going to be doing an apt install of git, which should already be there. Uh, build essential, CMake, um, the libuv1, libssl, and lib hardware lock. Um, all of those are needed to compile XMRig. So we're going to go ahead and paste that in, hit enter. And it, this is going to figure out the size it needs. It needs 276 megabytes. Hit Y, hit enter. And now we're going to let this download and install all of the dependencies. This may take a minute or two. Once the dependencies are installed, we need to clone the XMRig repo. So we're just going to do right click, do a paste here. And we're going to do a git clone on that repo. And hit enter. That only take a few seconds. And then the next command we're going to run is we're going to create a folder uh, in, within XMRig called build, and we're going to move into that build folder. And then we're just going to do a cmake space dot dot, hit enter. This is going to run the cmake command. This is going to go through and kind of configure everything for us. And now all we need to do to compile is do a make space hyphen j and then we can do the number of cores that we have available or number of threads um, if you're unsure about this then you can omit it and it'll just use one thread but for me i know that this is an octa core system so i'm going to use all eight threads to compile hit enter And if you're only using one thread, this may take a while. However, there, you will see percentage on every line. Once it gets to a hundred percent, then the miner is compiled uh, specific for our uh, architecture, and we will be able to run it. Okay, now that the compile is done, if we do an ls command, hit enter, we see we now have this XM rig file, and this is our actual miner. So what I'd like to do now is move back up to my home folder. So we're just going to do acd space dot dot, hit enter, hit the up arrow to run that same command again. And now we are in our home folder. We can do a dot 
slash, and we can do XM rig. So if I hit X and then the tab key, and then build tab, and then XM rig. And if we just do a dash H here, then the minor help file should show. And so this tells us that the minor is compiled and is capable of running on our system. So now we can specify the arguments. Do that, I'm gonna hit the up. And for testing here, we're gonna do RTM. So I'm gonna do a dash A for the algorithm. We're gonna specify Ghost Rider. And I actually have this full command. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it uh, so that we can save some time here. Uh, we'll go ahead and put in the algo, and then we will paste in the pull URL and also the worker address. So in this example, I'm using Cloud Ecos. Uh, so this, they have both a Varus and an RTM pool. So I'm using their RTM pool with a RTM wallet address. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And here you can see it detected eight threads and it doesn't have huge pages enabled, but this should start mining. Uh, now this will take probably a while to find the share, but here you can see we've got eight cores, eight threads, and our memory, we've got 50% free on the memory, so we are good there. If you don't have enough memory, then you can go into the settings in Android and up that uh, by using essentially Android's version of page file, which is going to use the hard, I say hard disk, it's going to use the system storage to uh, kind of buffer memory. I don't recommend doing that unless you absolutely have to. And here you can see it did connect to the pool, it did get a job, and it's got all three algos here, and here you can see our hash rate which obviously is extremely slow. But we're gonna let this mine for a bit and see if we can get some accepted shares. You can see that we just got a couple accepted shares so that it actually didn't take too long. Um, it looks like from the time we started the miner to those first two accepted shares, we're looking about two minutes or so. Uh, so definitely not bad at all. Now if we hop on over, let me grab my wallet address again, and let's hop on over to the pool and see if those reported yet. It just happened, so they may not show. Let's go ahead and plug our wallet address in. And we can see that we do have our active worker here. And again, we just started it, so this hash rate obviously is going to be off. Um, it's detecting right now 1.6 kilohash a second. Uh, especially with RTM, it's going to take a while uh, for the pool and the miner to kind of settle in at that hash rate, especially since it cycles between three different algos. But that's all there is to getting XM rig up and running. Uh, if we do a control C, we can stop that miner. And then you could also do uh, Monero with it if you wanted to, or any of the other algos. Uh, you can create the config file if you want, just like you would normally do on a PC, and run it. There's really with XMRig, there's really no difference uh, between configuring the miner on a regular Linux box or Windows and on a phone. Uh, the command line arcs are pretty much the same.